a win, a win. We have a Lavelle rocket win to talk about today. It's terrific news. Let's find out how they got there. That's right, the Laval Rocket finally back in the wing column last week. Boy, it was an action-packed week for the Laval Rocket. Three games at home, a pretty big deal new name added to the roster, a pretty big deal name making his return to Place Bell in a different sweater. Lots to cover today. We're going to do just that by looking at those three games today in the Rocket Rewind. Then we are going to, of course, take a look at the prospect breakdown and pick out a standout star from the prospects this week and then give you a look at what's ahead in the Laval Look Ahead. So let's start with those three games last week. You know, the Laval Rocket had had a tough few weeks there uh, in November and early December riding a seven-game losing streak coming into last week's three-game homestand. And so they were really looking to turn things around on Wednesday night when their division rivals, the Belleville Senators, came to town. Always a chippy affair between these two teams. And on, on that level, this game did not disappoint. Plenty of physicality, plenty of penalties. Um, and interestingly enough, although I had hoped to see Jakub Dobesh get the start in this game since he had been pulled in the first few minutes of their last game in Abbotsford, that wasn't to be the case. Strauss Mann was the guy who J.F. Uhl decided to go with on Wednesday. Um, and also, this was... Uh, all eyes were on the roster because Arbor Jacki making his AHL debut with the Laval Rocket on this night. You'll recall last week I mentioned, you know, Arbor Jacki activated off of IR by the Montreal Canadiens, loaned to Laval, but we did not yet know if he was actually going to play in Laval. Well, we do now know that the intention was for him to go down there and apparently work on his defensive game. Um, and so he made his AHL debut on this night. I will take a moment just right now to say if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, won't you do so? Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell because you're going to want to be notified in a couple of days later this week on the channel when my next video for Habs Hockey Report comes out. And in that video this week, I am going to completely break down everything that Arbor Jack I did in these three games for the Laval Rocket this past week, including some audio from post game and, and kind of hearing from him as to how the week has gone for him and how he's feeling. So you're not going to want to miss that. Hit subscribe, tap the notification bell. But back to this game against Belleville. Could they finally turn it around? Could they snap the losing streak? Well, unfortunately, Belleville came out firing on all cylinders and went up 5 to nothing on the Laval Rocket. Strauss Mann not having an easy time of things. In fact, looking pretty shaky on a couple of his goals as well. Um, and Belleville just completely took over this game. The Laval Rocket did manage to wake up in the last few minutes of the game, managing to get two goals on the board within the last few minutes of the game, but it obviously was too little too late. And their loss streak extended to eight games, dropping this one against the Belleville Senators 5-2. to two. That set up what could be a difficult challenge for Friday and Saturday night with the Hartford Wolfpack coming into town, the New York Rangers AHL affiliate coming in for Friday night, and then a Saturday afternoon matinee. Not only was Hartford coming into this series sitting at number two overall in the league, this is a very solid Hartford Wolfpack team. You may recall just uh, about a month ago, their former head coach, Chris Knobloch, was cherry-picked from the Edmonton Oilers to be the Oilers' new NHL head coach. That usually happens when a, an AHL coach is doing something pretty incredible uh, with their team, and that's exactly where the Hartford Wolfpack find themselves. In addition to that, their top points getter on the Hartford Wolfpack is none other than Ella Alex Belzeal, a former captain for the Laval Rocket, former fan favorite in Place Bell. He returns with the Hartford Wolfpack as well. So it was a tough task at hand for sure. They honored Alex Belzeal before Friday night's game. Uh, lots of fan support, although I don't think they were too pleased a uh, little bit later in the evening when he scored the first Hartford Wolfpack goal of the night, even though the Laval Rocket were already up to nothing. Jakob Dobis was in net for this game, and he took them all the way to the shootout in this game. Although, uh, you know, Laval scored the first two goals, Alex Belzeal then got Hartford on the, on the board, 
and they would go on to tie it. Nothing uh, got by either of the goaltenders in overtime. It did go to the shootout where Laval did ultimately lose in the shootout, but it was a much better performance overall. Um, And so maybe surprisingly enough to everyone, it's it's not usual necessarily to see an AHL goaltender go back to back, but particularly not when the next game, the second half of the back to back, is a matinee game at 3 p.m. But that's exactly what JF Ull did. He put Jakob Dobas right back in the crease. And that was a great decision because Jakob Dobas helped backstop the Laval Rocket. They were on fire on Saturday afternoon. And although Hartford scored first in front of a sold out Place Bell, because keep in mind, this was Laval's annual teddy bear toss game. The Laval Rocket managed to put then five unanswered goals of their own in the back of Hartford's net, uh, launching all the teddy bears. In fact, kudos to the fans at Place Bell. They helped Laval set a brand new franchise record for the number of stuffed animals and teddy bears collected at their teddy bear toss well over 12,000 stuffed animals hit the ice. It's always such a fun event for any team who does the teddy bear toss every year. Um, And more importantly, Laval got the two points with a rousing five to one victory. It was an absolute dominant performance, kind of the team that you'd like to see uh, come out and, and really take control of things each and every night. And so we'll see if that's the start of, of something, but some great momentum take coming into this coming week. The other piece of good news is I don't have any new injuries to report for you this week. In fact, the injury report was pretty quiet, and as far as roster movement was concerned, uh, there wasn't any roster movement that necessarily affected the three games last week, but with David Savard being activated off of IR by the Canadians at the beginning of this week, it means Matthias Norlander has been returned to the Laval Rocket, and he will rejoin the team for their road trip this week. Now, yes, the way the week ended was uh, was pretty good by all standards for, for Laval, uh, but there is a reality check when we take a look at the standings. They are now 6-12, 3-2 on the season. They have a long way to go. Uh, their nine-game losing streak that they just snapped uh, certainly has not helped them in the standings department. Uh, they are still last in the North Division. They are 14th in the Eastern Conference, and they are 29th overall in the AHL. If you look at winning percentage. They're technically 30th in the AHL. So they have a long way to go, but maybe, just maybe, a solid performance getting to the shootout on Friday night and a commanding 5-1 to one victory on Saturday. Maybe that's just the little bit of, of momentum that they need to help uh, start to crawl their way back up. On the prospect breakdown, despite the fact that they only were able to win one of those three games last week, the prospects continue to impress me. They are continuing to find their own ways to make their own stories and make their own strides. Joshua Waugh, although he has been a little quiet uh, recently, managed to have a goal and an assist last week, and he is actually still leading the team in goals. He's got eight goals on the season. No other uh, no other player on the team has that. Uh, Logan Mayu, boy, let me tell you, Logan Mayu's offense continues to be impressive. And what he's really needing to work on is his play in his own zone, his defensive game. When that falls into place for him, when he figures that out, uh, watch out. He will be on the Montreal Canadiens blue line. I guarantee it because uh, he could, he has all the makings of a very strong uh two-way player and his offense is certainly there he had three assists last week uh, in some very key moments in fact that now gives him 13 points on the season that puts him in third place on the team in terms of points Uh, and uh, we're just hoping that we see continued progression on the defensive side of his game but things are looking very promising with Logan Mayu. Jakob Dobas I have to say uh, you know Got pulled in that game against Abbotsford, not necessarily his fault per se. The team in front of him wasn't ready on that night, as you heard me say last week. Sat out on Wednesday night's game, but then came in and played two games in less than 24 hours and really did a great job against a very strong Hartford Wolfpack. Uh, Kudos to him on the right attitude, the right commitment, getting in the good headspace and just being strong and confident. 
His numbers for last week, that Friday night game stopping 36 of 39 shots with a 2.77 goals against average and a 923 save percentage. That is pretty decent. And then on Saturday, stopping 25 of 26 shots against 1.00 on the goals against. He only let one goal in with a save percentage of 962. Those are the kinds of numbers we want to see Jakob Dobas having. And hopefully he will continue to get plenty of starts going forward that he can build off of that. However, my standout star for this week, I have to go back to young Riley Kidney because this young man is really, really putting things together for himself. He has, I've mentioned him often in the last few weeks here on the show, and I've got to bring him in again because he had two goals and two assists just in those three games last week. Uh, Really just a tremendous showing. He continues to impress. He continues to earn his ice time and his place in the top six. And I also have to mention that he is the one who triggered the teddy bear toss for the Laval Rocket on Saturday. It's always a good feeling for any player to get to do that. I was very pleased to see that it was one of the Canadian's young prospects who did it. Uh, And he did it in style, of course. And uh, so for those reasons, Riley Kidney is my standout star this week. So what is on tap this week for the Laval Rocket? Well... They can't rest uh, on their laurels too long. They've got a lot of work ahead of them this week, although they do only play two games on the road. They're back on the road again this week, but these are tough matchups for two very different reasons. First, on Friday night, a 7.05 puck drop in Allentown, Pennsylvania, where they will visit the Lehigh Valley Phantoms. While the Phantoms are not necessarily having the most successful season in the win column, they are a tough opponent. And if you remember back on November 17th, the Phantoms came to Place Bell and it was a really ugly game in terms of penalties. There were majors that were handed out. There were plenty of misconducts handed out. There was a game misconduct handed out. There was a bench, a 10 minute misconduct bench penalty at the end of the game. This was not a pretty picture. And so the Laval Rocket also lost that game. Um, And so there is retribution, there's a rematch, there's plenty of bad feelings between those two teams. So in order for Laval to keep this momentum going and put back-to-back wins together, they're going to need to stay disciplined because, of course, their their PK is, is not really that successful. So they can't get themselves into too much penalty trouble. And they need to be able to just find a way to go into a, a hostile environment and get the win. And then that sets them up for their Saturday night game where they travel just an hour westward into central Pennsylvania to take on the Hershey Bears, the Washington Capitals AHL affiliate. Hershey is the defending Calder Cup champion and Uh, In rare form, the Calder Cup champs look like they are one of the top contenders yet again to win the championship this year. They are sitting first in the AHL. They are at the top of the league. They have had an incredibly successful season so far. And there's another familiar face on the other side of the ice as well. Pierre-Rick Dubé now playing for the Hershey Bears. And uh, he has all 12 goals for 16 and 16 points on the season so far. So he is really contributing on uh, the Hershey Bears roster. Uh, The Giant Center where the Hershey Bears play is a raucous place. The fans there are passionate. They are loud. It is not a fun place for visitors to come and play. So the Laval Rocket have their work cut out for them this week if they want to continue winning and I think they can do it if they put their mind to it but it's just a matter of seeing what their preparation looks like this week what kind of goaltending they get what kind of defense they get in front of their goaltenders and whether or not they can continue to be one of the top teams in the league in goals four so lots to keep track of We don't want you to miss any of it. In fact, uh, next week on the show, Patrick Williams will be back for his monthly visit here on Rocket Hockey Report. Patrick, of course, is the uh, the AHL reporter for NHL.com, and he is also a features writer for the American Hockey League on their website. He is also a member here at Rocket Sports, and so he's going to be stopping in to have a chat with us about how the Laval Rocket has been performing, and uh, always great insight from Patrick. You're not going to want to miss that. So if you have haven't done so already, tap subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, be sure you join us again next week for that. In the meantime, you know, trade 
deadline season is really just around the corner because 2024 is just around the corner. And the trade deadline not only affects the NHL in a big way, but it also tends to affect the AHL as well. And this past week on the Canadians Connection podcast, Rick and Michael took a look at who the Canadians' top trade targets are. Who could stay? Who could go? Who could they be bringing in? And how could it affect the NHL and maybe even the AHL with some of the prospects as well? So if you miss that, well, you definitely want to be sure to catch up on it. You can watch that video right here, and I'll see you again next time.